beauty of the ribbons is it's like the reef and then the continental shelf right on the edge, which it's more like coral sea stuff, but closer to shore. That's the last fish I expected to shoot. I'm like, mmm, it's amazing. G'day guys. G'day guys. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing for Power. We're currently on our way to the Ribbon Reef system north of Cooktown. So very exciting stuff coming up. We've got 10 days of absolute glass out weather. Let's do this. Yeah, stay tuned. Now you may have noticed Michael has a full set of teeth. Give us a smile, Michael. <laughs> so we actually, we just spent a month in Cairns. We flew back to Sydney. Michael picked up his new tooth. I picked up COVID. So I'm gonna be happy this trip if I can just dive past like two meters because I've been coughing like crazy. I've got pretty sure a sinus infection. I've got antibiotics. So worst comes to worst, I'll take those. However, I don't know how much diving I'm gonna be doing, but Michael's keen to get his doggy. The goal for me is get myself a huge doggy. So bigger than me is what I've always wanted, but I'd be happy with something pretty big like that. Uh, big we'll as, as big as mine? Bigger than Jess's, of course. Otherwise, I'll, she'll never let me live it down. But uh, yeah, we've also got Liam on Nalakai, who's traveling with us. He is frothing young Spiro and he's just bought himself a massive float and he just wants a doggy so we'll work really hard to try and get him one and uh, yeah and just a few other reef species for Jess and I. Basically we're sailing out on the last day of wind so today is going to be a bit uncomfortable tonight it's going to be like 20 plus knots so definitely not going to be the most comfortable night on the reef but it's let us sail the whole way up we've used bugger all fuel which means more tender fuel more runs um, and longer out at sea, so. Hey everyone, we'd just like to pause for a sec to thank our sponsors of this week's episode, AG1. So after a few weeks on the boat, our diets start to take a bit of a hit. So we go off grid from anywhere between three to five weeks, so it doesn't take long to run out of our fresh fruits and veggies. And we're also drinking desalinated water, which has zero vitamins and minerals, so yeah. Yeah, so when we heard about AG1, it just made sense to just give it a go. With 75 vitamins and minerals, it ensures we're not missing out on anything vital in our diet. We find that it gives us the energy boost in the morning that we need to keep us going all day long. It's a great peace of mind to know that we're getting the correct nutrition to sustain our lifestyle and you know that we're doing everything we can to keep our mind and body running at 110%. Head to the link in the description below to get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Now back to the video. Officially cyclone yeah. season, 1st of November. So that's one of the big challenges we have now. We don't have the trade winds uh, as strong, but you also have the risk of a cyclone. So we've uh, got the Predict Wind subscription and our Iridium Go, and that's gonna keep us informed on anything that's coming when we're out of reception. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah. James on looking out for us. James Thanks on Selkies, Selkie. also keeping an eye on uh, cyclone activity. So we will, yeah, check in with them and check in with Predict Wind every now and then and uh, keep an eye on it. We've got a few bolt holes that we've kept in mind, like in Cooktown, Port Douglas, stuff like that. So we'll see anything coming. We're going to bolt in. This is all new to us. I've never dived any of the ribbons. Have you? No. Uh, no, I've been south of the ribbons. I've never actually dived the ribbon reef. But so. the beauty of the ribbons is it's like the reef and then the continental shelf right on the edge, which is not what you get in the other reefs so uh, it's more like coral sea stuff but closer to shore so this is where people fly in from all around the world to chase grander marlin and we are in the prime grander marlin season right now we definitely wouldn't shoot one but i would love absolutely love to see one in the water and film it get some photos that, be, be amazing yeah, so it's, we might go do a few drifts for those it's as land well. of the giants out here like yeah thousand yeah. pound marlin and huge bull sharks to go with yeah. that um but yeah i'm keen to go out there and maybe try to raise one and just have a look you know like we can't deal with a thousand pounds of meat on here um and uh yeah just be cool to see but anyway we're gonna head out we're going to our first reef uh today which is just out of cooktown and um we're gonna jump in and just have a bit of a scratch on the reef this afternoon if it's calm enough we might go chase some doggies see if we can get Michael, 
a, a doggy somewhere near the size of mine. It's okay, don't cry. Uh, <laughs> Guests for dinner. <laughs> cleaning up. Oh, boat's been in a bit of a state with me being sick. Someone's got to keep this ship running. Yeah. And it hasn't been you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just having lunch, looking out the back, and this Spanish just like jumping out of the water like two, three meters at a time. It's so fishy. It's uh, so many birds. actually closed too, isn't it? Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still a couple of miles out from the anchorage, just on Bombay Watch, just in case. Got the charts up on the phone, and Michael's got the satellite images back there. We're still a fair way away from the anchorage. There's big booby out here. Long way from nowhere. The sign of the times to come, perhaps. <laughs> Goodbye, clean decks. Hello, bird poo. Coming up to that four meter bombing up here. Yeah. Just coming in, we've got a few spots here marked out. Um, it's not like the best anchorage, um, it looks quite rubbly. So we'll get in, we'll have a look. Uh, the only issue with anchoring on the rubble is obviously sometimes you can get live coral in there, so we don't want to damage that. Um, but also from a boaty's side, um, if you anchor on gravel and rubble and stuff like that, it actually strips the galvanized the galvanizing off your chains, as well as obviously the anchor doesn't hold as well. Uh, we always look for sand to anchor on environmentally and for our own chains sake. The ribbon reefs are world famous and they get the name from their topography. They're a string of thin reef that run for over 100 kilometers from Cooktown right up to Lizard Island. The underwater topography sees this system right on the edge of the continental shelf. Well, we are here. We are at this beautiful anchorage, nice sandy bottom, and we are currently getting all the gear ready. It's always a bit of a mission the first day diving. Um, got the floats inflated, guns rigged up, ready to go, cameras being serviced, O-rings greased. Yeah, very, very excited to go and explore some new ground. Hey? Yeah, super excited. How spot are we? We just uh, hope the current is running. I mean, if not, we'll just chase some reefies and... I think it is, because we're sitting like side on to the, um, to the swell at the moment. We're going to go and explore a bommy in the green zone and yeah, see, see how good these ribbon reefs actually are. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's no, there's no this. I don't think the conditions are very favourable at the moment with um, the views and just, I don't know, it's not very fishy. Anyway, we're going to go check out a new spot now and see if we can find some fish. All right, we're out of the green zone and it looks a lot cleaner. I can actually see the bottom now.
torture. I'm stuck on the surface of the sinus infection. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like an aquarium under us at the moment. I've never seen fish so calm. Everything's just stacked like top to bottom bait fish. It's like nothing hunting them. Leaves just shot a little surgeon. She's gonna cut up. Could stir the pot quite a bit. So you just didn't see what happens. But uh, it's just, this is such a beautiful little spot we found here. It's too relaxed here. What do you think about diving the inner, like some of the inner ribbon there? On the way back to the boat? Yeah, well you can spear there. Just sort of paddy hop back. There's that southern mark I'm not too fussed about now, but... Well, there's nothing sunny here. Cover a bit of ground. chance and then I just exhaled because I have so much weight on just sank and got him. That's the last fish I expected to shoot with block sinuses. So good. Yeah, nice. That's a that's a common trout too. That's a good one. what's going on in the kitchen okay apart from making a terrible mess mm -hmm. um, I'm making a steamed moo <laughs> take 1000 steamed moo 
and broccoli steamed black bean <laughs> steamed black bean steamed black bean moon and broccoli. Yeah, that's it. Steamed black bean moon. Steam <laughs> broccoli. Broccoli. Steam black bean moon and broccoli. Black bean and broccoli. Anyway. Can you tell we've been diving all day? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, one beer, one mid strength beer yeah. might I add, and a uh, and a day of diving and sailing. So in here, I'll put the recipe below. Usually I put eggplant on the bottom, but I'm just going to substitute with broccoli. So we've got half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of grated ginger, a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of sesame oil, half a tablespoon of light soy. Uh, I've got a little dried up Carolina Reaper. Thank you, Craig and Tina. They gave us some um, Carolina Reapers on the Goldie at the patron meetup we had there. And um, yeah, we've been growing it ever since and it's been through hell and back, <laughs> coral like, sea, it's... waves copped over it, I've had a tackle box dropped on it but I managed to pull two chilies off it after all of that effort <laughs> and one of them is in here so thank you Craig and Tina. We've got a tablespoon of oyster sauce, half a tablespoon of chassing wine, uh, a clove of garlic minced in there, a tablespoon of rinsed minced black beans, Ooh, like that. two spring onions, two tablespoons of corn flour, I'm just going to steam it for 15 minutes with the brock. Bob's your uncle. And so that's the mix there. You can see it's delicious. I wish you could smell that. The black beans give oh it my, that. I wish I could smell it as well. <laughs> the, the black beans give it that really nice umami kind of flavor. This is the moo sliced up into little pieces. Little chunks there. I reckon 10 to 15 minutes with the broccoli. You think it'll cook the same as the broccoli? Same. More or less. Oh, it's the same time. We'll find out shortly. Anyway, just put it all in there. Jess has, uh, I've been just a personal chef for about three weeks now. She's had COVID and uh, she can't even taste any of it. So hopefully that Carolina Repo is going to do it, <laughs> kickstart her uh, taste buds back in action. So this is what the salted black bean looks like. That is, that is probably one of the powerhouses of Chinese cooking ingredients there. Salted black beans. Salted fermented black beans. They don't smell amazing. Uh, you wouldn't really smell it and go, I can't wait to eat that, but... Definitely not. It just gives it the best flavour, everything. Stacking it on there. Ooh, look at that. It does smell good. Anyway, so steam that for 15 minutes and we'll see you on the other end of it. Nice. Look at that. Perfect fit. So it's been 10 minutes, uh, I was going to do 15 but I thought I'd check on it and it looks like she's cooked. Oh yeah, look at that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Let's eat. I feel so bad, he keeps cooking these meals and I'm like, mmm, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I can taste stuff. It's a great <laughs> review. Why did you want me to film you eating this? She's like, film me eating it. I yeah, don't know. What's I'm the just, point? It's, no, it is nice. I can taste mm, garlic. Tell and... everyone how it tastes. Oh, it tastes uh, yeah, like I, sorry. salt and, and I well, can taste An food. honest re COVID review is, um, yeah, I can taste stuff. <laughs> taste the garlic here. I don't know. I know this dish is good though, when he cooked it with the eggplant, it was like, yum. Mm. A bit mushy. The moo. Yeah. It's real mushy, hey? The mm. flavour's there, but the texture's horrible. It's weird, hey? It's like yeah. mashed potato almost. We'll Sorry, change guys. it back to trout. <laughs> We've done it with trout, yeah, it's good. It's been done before, it's not a um, experimental no. dish. We usually try it at least once before we cook it. It's Weird. like when you get a kingy that goes mushy. Mm. Next episode on Sailing Papau. Sailing the Ribbons Reef, this sums it up pretty nicely. A huge thanks to our current patrons for your ongoing support. And if you'd like to grab some merch, check out our link on screen or head to sailingpapau.com.au. Cheers. A steamed moo and blo... Broccoli. <laughs>
<laughs> Blockery. Blockery. A steamed moo and broccoli black bean. <laughs> <laughs>